Hello, and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. Today I'm going to show you three new recorders that I just bought. I just bought them like maybe a week or two ago. And I know the question always comes up when I buy extra ones. Why did you buy them? You've got so many now. Because I've well got over 300 instruments in my collection. And uh, I, I love all of them, but I'm always adding too. And there's a couple of reasons. For one thing, if you are a collector, you tend to want to add to what you have. But the other reason is, this is a brand name that I have never known before, I never heard of before. It's called the Skag, S-K-A-G-G. -G. You know, some instruments are Yamaha and Khan and Selmer and all of those, the brand names, but this is Skag. And I'm assuming it's a student model. It's above the level of a toy. Uh, it, does, it can't do what the real good ones can do in terms of pitch, but it can hit most of the notes in the two register range. I'm having one, uh, one note in the lower range that I can't get on either one of them, which means that you wouldn't want to use it for professional work if you had to use that note, but everything else seems to pitch okay. So let me show you what they are, and then I'm going to go into what I can use them for in terms of teaching, because they do have a characteristic about them that my other recorders don't have. And uh, for example, they can show the block a lot more clearly. Most of the time I talk to you about the block and where it is, and you can see it on the underside of the instrument. Well, these instruments are translucent, and the block is a different color than the rest of the instrument. Most most of them are about the same, but this is a different color for most of the instruments. So therefore, you can see the whole thing in a translucent. So that's another reason I bought them. So I'll start off with the blue. And blue is not my favorite color, but this is an interesting, good-looking instrument. And the block that I'm always talking about is right here. And usually, it's about the same color as the instrument, so it's not obvious where it is, or it blends in well. But this is white. And if you look at it, well, the first time I looked at it, I said, what is this white thing coming out the top? If you look at the top of it, it's also a part of the block. It's supposed to be there. It's not a mistake. But when I looked at it, it looked like it had too much white on it and that somebody put a piece of plastic. I hope you can see this. Somebody put a piece. You can see the white plastic now because I can see it on the monitor. You know, you can see that white and it, right down here. And I thought somebody stuck a piece of white plastic there. Why did they do that? And it turns out it is a part of the block, but you wouldn't know it on most instruments because it would blend. If I take this orange one here, and this is, uh, this is not one of the new ones. It's not a skag. It also has the same piece because they're all built alike. But you would never know it because the colors blend in so easily, you just don't see a difference. In fact, you wouldn't even know that there was a block there. It's all, all the same color, all plastic, all the same color. But at any rate, that's the blue one. Then I have a red one that I bought. And you can probably also see from here to here, you can see a block. It's got that same white block. And if you look at the top of it, which I'm going to put in this direction, it would look like there was a piece of thin plastic that seemed a little out of place. Now, the one that's the most obvious, but that's a part of the block. It's supposed to be there. The one that's most obvious is this one here this brilliant greenish one. You can see practically through that. If you look at the block right here, if you look at the front, doesn't it look like there's an extra piece of white plastic going down the middle? And you'd wonder, what's that for? It's a part of the block, and you can see it. You can see the whole block. So I'm going to just describe this to you and show it to you, and I have made a sketch of it. This is what the block looks like, if you can see through it. Now, I think you can. I can from here, but that doesn't mean you can from where you are. But it looks like you can, and there seems to be white that goes all the way down here, and then it juts up, 
and it follows the shape of the mouthpiece, and then there seems to be a strip of it down here. Let me turn this all the way around, because I think you can see this more clearly than you can in the other instruments that I have, the other ones that I have here. Now you see, this is the block. It's, it's part of the block, which is white, and that's one of the reasons I bought them, because I can show you things here because you can see them more easily in other instruments you can't see them, they're covered up. But this whole thing here is the block. It follows the shape of the mouthpiece and it comes to a little flat place on top. And if I show you that fl flat place, uh, place on top, there'd be a little line here. It's looking a little bit darker, but it still is just a shadow of the block. That's where the mouthpiece is. You blow into that, and you would notice that there's a little place that kind of uh, c comes out a bit. It's not completely flat. I tried drawing it this morning just by holding it in place and following it with a marker, but it didn't come out very well. But you can see there's a little place in front where it, it doesn't go flat. It, it bows out a little bit. Well, all recorders do that. And uh, even the really nice ones that I have, they do that. This is not completely flat. It has looks like a little hump in it. Now that's where the ear goes, and where the block stops, which is right here, you can't see it in this one, that's where the labium starts. So let me get one of these again. I guess I'll use the green one. I think it will be easier to see. I can see it so clearly here, but I'm not sure that you can see it as clearly as I can. It follows this, the mouthpiece. It's a little smaller than the mouthpiece. It has the same shape as the mouthpiece, comes to a little flat top, and then goes down, and there's a little hump that is that little curvature right here in the mouthpiece, and that's where the air goes, because if it didn't, you couldn't have any air. The purpose of the block is not to get too much air and direct the air where it needs to go. So this sticks out a little bit. This block is a little bit smaller than the instrument, so it, it catches up right here, and you see it clearly. You see that's part of the block. And then here, you don't see it so clearly, but you see that white piece of plastic. When you blow in it, you blow down here in front of the block. The air goes in front of the block. And where the block stops, which is right here, you can see the edge of it. I think you can see the edge of it. Well, the air, the labium starts right here. So let me put it this way. It does little, look a little awkward on the monitor, but here it is, it's part of the block. It will stop right here where my finger is, and the labium is right here. Now why would it be designed like that? It was, you can see the bottom of the block right here. It's designed like that because you have to have the air going in one direction and you have to have it going out in a, in a certain direction and the rest of it goes down the shaft of the instrument. Okay, so you have mouthpiece, block, and the block is the same shape as the mouthpiece. It uh, shows on the back and in the front or the side, you can see it in the inside. It stops right here where my finger is, and right here is the labium. And when you blow into it, you blow into the instrument, there's gonna be a shallow place right here where you can have the ear go, and then out of the instrument in this labium. The labium is, it looks like just a square rectangle, but it isn't. It's got a little slant in it. 
and a little opening right here, which is called the window. I don't think you'd be able to tell that just by my showing it to you on this, but it's a little window, and then the air's gonna go down the rest of the instrument. And where does it go out when it's here? Well, it depends upon how many fingers you've got closed. If I have all of these fingers closed, it's not gonna come out until it gets down to one of these lower holes. And remember, the longer the tube, the lower the tone is gonna be. So the lower tones, you have the most of your fingers just just covering it. And if you want an upper tone, then you don't have many fingers covering it. And then of course you have your, your thumb hole in back, which is usually covered, but for octaves you pull that down. I mean, it's a regular recorder, it plays like a regular recorder. But I thought it was interesting, the fact that you can see so much of the block, which usually I'm describing to you, but you usually can't see it. But there it is, all that white area in there is part of the block. And hopefully you'll be able to see through it enough to see where it is. I'm gonna turn it around once again. You can see the end of the block comes right here. The labium is right here. It looks like a little rectangle area but I can get the light to kind of glint off from it. Then you can see more where it is. <clears throat> Then you put your thumb on the thumb hole and you've put your three fingers on top. Left hand is always on top. Right hand is always on the bottom. And that's the way that you hold it. But this way you can at least see it. I have some that are clear, but um, they're harder to see through than the green one. I think the green one is the easiest one to see through. Now they all come with a case, but the case is kind of a sad thing. It's just a cheap piece of plastic and you could fold the top over and you can snap it, you know? And that's it. Each one comes in a cheap piece of plastic, so there's no protection from it. You have to have something else to protect it or make your own or whatever, but that's the way they all come. And they all come with this little page here. This is the advertisement for the SCAG. But in the inside of it, it has a couple of pictures as to how you hold your hands and also a fingering chart. Now what I've done is I've taken this and I photocopied it because it's, it comes wrinkled, of course, because it's all folded up around the instrument. They do this as cheap as possible, I tell you. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I, I also made it a little bit larger, and I've told you before, left hand on top, and you can see that, you can see that it's the left hand on top, although it looks to you like it's on the right, it's really the left of the body, and the right hand goes on the bottom, left on top, right on the bottom, and it has the fingers on the key, so you could see anyone who was a new player would be able to see the position of the hands, which is important. Now the music, uh, the uh, fingering chart is, a lot like most fingering charts. You're not gonna be able to discern much here, but all those little black dots, those little black circles, is where holes have been closed. And when they are not closed, they're just circles, and they're not closed, and not blackened in, that those holes are open. And so you can figure out when you look at it, this probably isn't big enough for you to do it, but uh, you, you can figure out what the fingering is, how many many of your fingers are closed to play the certain notes. And on the top, you have all of these littler holes, and some of them are open and some of them are closed. And that's the thumb hole in the back. That represents the thumb hole in the back. So you can look at each note, and it is complete. It goes from the low C, which is the lowest that the instrument can get, and it goes all the way up to the high D, it actually can go, uh, uh, it actually doesn't go quite that far. The recorders can go to the high C. That D is hard to play. So at any rate, that gives you a, a chance to see what the fingering chart is like. Um, 
It's, uh, the, the instrument actually goes to the second C up, but it doesn't go higher than that. So what I want to do is spend some time in review. I think it's an interesting instrument. I like it. The note that won't come in is a low C. I haven't found one yet at the hole that, that'll come in. You see what it does? It makes a half a step, but it won't make a whole step. So you're not really getting a C. You're really getting a C sharp, but you're not getting any higher than that. Now, on a real good instrument, you should be able to get it in. Now, another interesting thing, I noticed it in this one. I want to check and see if it's in the others. Well, that one wouldn't have it anyway. I think these all do, that come from Skag. This, it's got a little tiny B right above the thumb hole. It's just kind of imprinted in there. And that tells us that it's a Baroque instrument. Uh, Baroque instruments are like other instruments, but their fingering is a little bit more challenging. It's not bad, it's not that hard. But the other, if it didn't have that, it would be a German, uh, a, a German type fingering, which is a little easier, especially on the F. The F, B, A, G, F should be this. In a German fingering, F will be just this. B, A, G, F. And then you lift this up, and then you get your E, and then you get your D, and if it was able to play it, you would get the C. The real reason that I bought it is that I, every so often I like to get something that's new and fresh and different, and also because of the fact that the block can be so easily seen, it teaches you how this instrument is made. It's a very simple instrument, really, in the way that it's made, but it can play an amazing amount of notes. It can play all kinds of notes. And, and there are some keys it can't play, but there are most keys that it can play, and it plays very well. But this is not, of course, the highest uh, type of instrument. What I mean by that is it's not the most expensive. If you take a, a really expensive recorder, you can pay a lot of money for it, and it can play a lot of things. And most of them do play a lot of things anyway. Now, uh, you will find on the bottom of this instrument, and this is typical of most instruments, it'll have a double hole on the bottom, and it'll have a double hole just above the bottom. So here we go, B, A, G, F, E. This one is a double hole, and this one is a double hole. Now, why the double hole? So you can place flats and shops more clearly. It's just easier to do it that way. And most of the modern instruments have a double hole on the D and a double hole on the C. But what if you don't? It doesn't make any difference. You're going to be able to play those notes anyway. Now, here's a German instrument made in Germany, and it's a very good, it's a high-quality instrument. It does not have any double holes on the bottom. This bottom is just one single hole, and this bottom next to it, the D, is one single hole. Does it make a difference? No, it doesn't. You just slide your finger where you want it to be, and you don't have that extra hole to give you a, a boost in terms of playing shops and flats. But basically, if it's a good instrument, you don't need it. It'll do it anyway. Take a look at this block. This is a wooden instrument. The block is wooden, and you wouldn't know it was even there. <clears throat> you wouldn't be able to discern the fact that there's another little piece of wood here. Now, I can because I can feel it, but I can also see it. But it's a little line. It is so even and so smooth that unless you have eyes, you know, where you can really pick it up or you're sitting right beside it like I am, you would never see that. There's a little discoloration. That's a part of the block. But most of it is just so smooth that you would hardly even notice that it was there. You find that the labium is a little easier to pick up maybe, if I can get it to, to reflect light. I don't know as I can. But at any rate, the labium is right here. 
where my finger is. And they're all built the same way. So it's interesting to see what you can do with them. Now this one is also a Japanese. This is Japanese. And what's good about it is that every, it's a student model, but it's a really good one. And uh, the, wherever, no matter where you hold it, you can always just, that's where the recorder are. This is the mouthpiece right here. Now the block is not obvious, you know, it's just right there. It's not obvious, it's not like you can see. It's been built a little differently, so you can't see an extra piece in there. But it would stop right here. And, and the labium is right below it. I don't know as you can see it, right where my finger is. But this whole part here is the head joint. And this part from here down to here is the body of the instrument. And then from here to here is the foot joint. So most of these recorders actually can be pulled apart into three different uh, sections. However, not all of them can be. Now the uh, uh, tone holes you can't see in the front because it's, it's a darker color. And, but the tone hole in the back, which is in the thumb hole, you can see that because that's surrounded by a little plastic piece. And most of the instruments, the, uh, that is not done. The hole is there, but you don't look at it when you're playing it, and they don't circle it. But this has been circled with plastic, so it's another way of showing you what the different parts are and having them differentiate with the different colors so you can easily pick out what the parts are. So I want to just, uh, we don't have too much time left. I want to go between this uh, session and the next session with a kind of review. Some of you won't need it. Some of you may be starting to see the show and you haven't seen it before and you're just kind of like beginners. So I think every so often a review is necessary. Oh, I want to mention too, these uh, skags come with a cleaning rod. This is a cleaning rod, the same color as the instrument. And if you look, it looks like there's like a little eye of a needle here. You put a little piece of uh, material, cloth through it, just fold it through. Not a big piece, just a little piece. And then you can just take it and put it up and down and clean, and clean it off that way, clean off the instrument. However, I don't like these, and I don't ever use them. I use them more for pointers than anything else. But they're cheap to make, they don't add any expense really to the instrument to speak of, and then you can stick something in, and they say they've given you a cleaning rod. A much more effective cleaning rod would be something like this which has a fuzzy part to it. I'll hold it in front of me. And because this is a small one, but recorders aren't very big, at least most of them that most people play on. And you don't want anything big, but you can put those right in and, and go up and down and it's much more effective than putting a piece of cloth and what they send you. And they come in different sizes for different sized instruments. Some of them are very large, like for the saxophone, put them right in the bell, it absorbs all the moisture. Why would you want to have moisture absorbed? Because there'll be damage to the pads if you don't. Now a recorder doesn't have pads, for the most part. I've seen one or two that do, but for the most part they don't. And so therefore, you don't have to worry about damaging anything. But if you're working with a flute, saxophone, oboe, bassoon, anything that has pads on it, and the moisture builds up in the inside of the instrument as you play it, then what's going to happen is eventually you're going to damage the pads, and the pads have to be replaced. So this is a way of, if you use a kind of a, of a device like this, a cleaning rod like this, you will be able to save some uh, problems with the instruments that you play that have keys and have pads. If you take a look at this Gerbeintat, I brought in the Gerbeintat. I'm going to be using it in the next show. And you can see that these pads 
cover holes and if you don't and a moisture will build up on them and then they will be damaged and you have to replace them. It's not a big deal, but why do it if you don't have to, if you can take care of it without doing that? So we're just about out of time. I'm going to show you another instrument and some others uh, next, uh, next show. So please join me then and we'll continue with our review.